Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. In this video, we've got a bunch of AMD Zen 5 and Zen 6 updates to go through. I want to talk to you guys about Prometheus and AMD leveraging Samsung for a future product and some other bits and pieces as well for their CPUs. And then we're going to move on to RTX 40 Super. Now, we have spoken about that extensively over the past couple of weeks, of course, but now AIBs are essentially confirming the specifications of Super. We've got some some updates on the performance pricing and release dates and of course black friday is now almost upon us so the pricing in particular uh, given the performance that we're going to be seeing here is going to be something that i think you guys are going to want to know about because well quite frankly you may get a really good deal with an rtx 4070 ti or whatever and you can do kind of an analysis whether you want to wait until early next year to upgrade or whether you just want to do so now again because of those uh, black friday deals which are going to be coming up for amd nvidia and so on and so on and we're going to get into all of that plus more after this message from the video's sponsor if you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So this information is courtesy of Gamma Zero Burst, and what they basically did is investigate, well, AMD employees plus other folks as well on LinkedIn. And, well, quite frequently what you find is that <laughs> employees are not the best at being discreet when it comes to the stuff because obviously LinkedIn is a social network site where, of course, engineers can, you know, basically find new job opportunities, etc., etc. I don't need to know, I don't need to explain, excuse me, to you guys how LinkedIn works. So sometimes stuff, well, let's just say it slips through the cracks. So the first thing I want to talk to you about, and we're just going to go over this quickly, is Samsung. Now, AMD's primary partner when it comes to manufacturing CPUs and GPUs, as you probably know, is TSMC. They were used for their 7nm process, their 6nm process, and 5nm process. But Samsung have also been used by AMD in the past, and it seems that we're going to see a 4nm process of T uh, Samsung being leveraged for something. Unfortunately, these um, you know investigations haven't yielded yet what uh, product will be manufactured using this process. Now, it's probably not a CPU based upon what I've been hearing, but I haven't gotten concrete information. It could be a, let's just say for the sake of argument, IO die. Um, Zen 5 for the uh, Granite Ridge uh, AM5 platform, of course, the Ryzen CPUs, that's going to be the same IO die that what we have for Zen 4. And I think, you know, I, I don't think anything's going to change there, but for future products like Zen 6 or Zen 7, who knows? It's also possible that it's nothing to do with an IO die at all. It could be an APU. Obviously, uh, AMD are creating crap tons of different APUs for various uh, partners. So it could be something like that. Or it could be a GPU with RDNA 4 or RDNA 5, maybe a lower end product. Who the hell knows at this point? So it's going to be very interesting. It's also possible that it's a manufactured test chip or something that just has never actually seen the light of day outside of an AMD laboratory. That also happens as well, where they're just kind of testing things and figuring out, you know, the future direction of a specific product. Who knows? Like, and this is just an example. This, I'm not saying they've ever done this, but they could just be internally screwing around with just like, oh, let's just create, you know, a chip that has like, I don't know, 16 cores on this specific CCD and test it just to see what happens, you know, even if it's like bandwidth starved, just to figure out what's going on with caches and other bits. Like, oh, that, that's kind of an extreme example, but just to give you an idea, sometimes, most of the time, they do stuff with this in simulation, but sometimes I mess around with products and it becomes kind of a bit complicated. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to do some investigation to try and figure out more information on that. But yeah, ultimately, the big story here, however, is some updates to AMD's CPU product roadmap. 
So as you can see on screen, Zen 4, the 5NM process, it's Persephone. Zen 4C, again, 5NM, is Dynas. And then you have Nirvana, which of course is Zen 5, 3NM. Then Zen 5C, possibly 3NM, is Prometheus. And then Morpheus is Zen 6, which is 2NM. As far as I understand it, Morpheus is correct. Worth noting with Zen 5, it becomes a little more complicated because not all products are produced on the 3NM process. Um, as far as I understand anyway, Granite Ridge, for example, will be on the 4NM process. So it's kind of dependent whether it's server, etc, etc, etc. Um, so obviously, you know, AMD kind of let's say use premium silicon where it's required. Just to give you a small update as well, I've and this is really quick because I've discussed Zen 5 performance quite a bit, including a really extensive uh, breakdown in a previous video, which I uploaded maybe a week or two ago. But just to give you a really quick update, my source are all pretty much at this point saying much the same thing. Integer workloads is probably gonna be about 10%, maybe a little bit more in terms of IPC gain over, of course, its predecessor. Mixed workloads is gonna be more along the lines of 20-ish percent. But ultimately, these are, you know, figures that I will only 100% believe when I've got a lot more solid information. But that does seem to be the figures that have been touted to me extensively. To be very clear, these are the vanilla chimps. In other words, these are um, variants which, of course, are not outfitted with like X3D and things get a little bit different there. I will be extremely interested to see actually how these perform uh, across a myriad of different applications, but also to see what effects different memory configurations have, particularly, again, on the Ryzen systems. As I have heard, some workloads really are quite memory sensitive, but we'll wait and see on that. Anyway. Let's skip to RTX 40 Super, shall we? Uh, most of this information is courtesy of WCCF Tech, so of course I will leave a link down below. Now, just to give you a very quick update, for those who don't know, you can skip about 30 seconds into the future if you know this stuff, but basically RTX 40 Super is essentially... RTX 40, in terms of the you know architecture, that's basically reusing a lot of the dyes. The difference is the specifications, of course, will receive a bump. Now... To my understanding, these GPUs are quite new in uh, NVIDIA's, let's say, decision-making process. Quite a long time ago, they were considering releasing Supers, but this was basically a counter to RDNA 3 if the 7000 series Radeons were very performant. We know that story. So they kind of just held off. So this is a way of them basically shifting new inventory and sales figures for RTX 40 have been slowing down depending on the region and the specific SKU. And ultimately some SKUs, I think we can all agree, are just not where they should be in terms of the price performance. For example, the price of the RTX 4080 is just really expensive versus the gulf between it and the um, 4090. So uh, again, WCCF Tech have the specifications here and we're gonna run through them real fast. So the 4080 Super is now 10,240 CUDA cores. And of course, this is a nice increase in specifications. You can see the um, comparison here on WCCF Tech versus the predecessors. And this is gonna be a 320 watt part, 16 gigs of RAM, of course. Uh, it's gonna be using the AD103400, then AD103275 is gonna be the 4070 Ti Super. That's just, that's just a top name. I love that name, it's brilliant. 8448 CUDA cores, again, 16 gigs of RAM, which is quite nice. 285 watts and 225 watts for the 4070 Super. 7168 CUDA cores and again 12 gigabytes of RAM is decent enough. So according to WCCF Tech, these GPUs are going to basically be announced in January and probably do some type of launch. Now previously a lot of these specifications were rumored, however, um, there were only rumors. So basically these were at the, at the time, basically NVIDIA were kind of messing around with different specifications and then those specifications became quite quite but basically we're becoming more locked in and now nvidia have basically briefed aibs and this is what's happening going forward so it seems that these gpus are going to be launching very early january which again 
kind of gives you a lot of questions whether or not to upgrade. Now, the big thing that I'm hearing is that the prices for these cards are going to be significantly less. And this raises a couple of very interesting points. So the first, um, I've heard a tentative price point of a thousand bucks for the 4080 Super or whatever it ends up being called. Let's just assume that is the name. It does seem like that's a lock because again, in a recent video, I also covered the fact that branding now is starting to leak online as well. Now, obviously prices can change up until the last minute. Nvidia are famous for doing this, but again, at this point, it does seem quite likely that Nvidia will be basically cutting the prices of these various SKUs. So the big question is, what happens to the older cards and should you upgrade now um, or wait? Well, honestly, it's going to be very dependent to me on the Black Friday deals. Um, and yeah, I personally would probably wait on most of the SKUs. Um, the other question is, what about the 1490 Ti or the 1490 Super or whatever it ends up being called? It doesn't seem that that is going to be launched early next year, at least according to what I'm hearing. And also the WCCF Tech report doesn't seem to mention it as well. So if you do want a faster GPU, you're probably going to have to wait <laughs> faster than the 1490 uh, itself. The performance gains based on you know the rumored specifications, and I've covered them a few times in the past, you know, ultimately, you're probably going to be getting around 10 to 20% faster uh, GPU with the 4090 Super or TI, whatever it ends up being called, over the 4090. I will be very interested to see whether the 4090 itself receives a price cut. Um, the sales figures for that card are quite interesting at this point. I think a lot of folks at this stage have kind of made a decision on the graphics cards. Um, so next year we will not see Blackwell launch. That's going to be after. So it looks like Blackwell for desktop is like 2025, um, which is, you know, quite a while in the future, honestly. But next year is also going to be a very aggressive year anyway. So next year, we've got RDNA 4 launching. However, as we've spoken about a trillion times at this point, those are not going to be cards which are going to be contenders for like the 4080 Super or the 4090. They're going to be much lower in performance, somewhere roughly between N31 and N32. So you can kind of, you know, do some ideas in your head of what, you know, the performance levels for those are going to be. RDNA 4 is not going to be a GPU which is going to compete against like the 4080 Super or something like that. They're going to be roughly on par between an N32 and N31 based GPU. So they're going to fall somewhere in between depending on various characteristics of the game and the application that's being tested and the graphics settings, for example, whether it's got ray tracing, etc, etc, etc. But also on top of that, Battle Mage is going to come out. So Next year is going to be quite cool for NVIDIA's competitors. So that also is possibly a reason that NVIDIA are doing this. And then maybe we could see some more price adjustments when Battle Mage and RDNA 4 launch. But as always with this stuff, um, you know, it's very difficult to predict exactly what is going to happen in the market. The great news, of course, is that this is excellent for folks who have been stuck on, you know, a GTX 900 series card or even Pascal because now some games are going to start to require things like mesh shading. Um, but anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you did, it's YouTube. You know what to do. And uh, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.